Hello viewers, today I am going to show you a surgical procedure in which we are going to do K wire of Coley's fracture. Now, Coley's fracture is one of the most commonest fracture that is encountered in orthopedic practices. A lot of times uh, it is treated uh, with uh, plaster, but there are occasions where it needs wire or sometimes plates as well. So, today my goal is to take you through in a step by step fashion to show you how to do a Coley's. A fracture reduction and KVR fixation. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, I would kindly request you to subscribe my channel as you will find many operative as well as examination videos which will be of huge importance in your orthopedic career. So, let us do K wiring of Coley's fracture today. So this is our uh, lady, she is right hand dominant, she unfortunately fell and you can see on AP she has got an extra articular fracture of uh, distal radius and same is seen on uh, the lateral. Now she is around uh, 70, so uh, we are planning to do a close reduction and k bar fixation for her. So we are ready now, uh, the patient is uh, positioned uh, supine, uh, we have angled the table slightly and I am sure if you are following me, uh, then uh, there are occasions where I angle the table, just, it just gives us more space to work. Uh, of course, we do not need the tunique because we are not uh, planning to open anything, so tunique is unnecessary. Uh, my trolley is going to be on this side. Now I have got Nitesh uh, who is great, so I think for us it will be very easy because one person can... Uh, hold the reduction and other person can fire the wire. Um, C arm is going to come from this end and my C arm screen will be right in the front. So this is our theta setup and let us move on to the reduction and K bar fixation. So the first thing is satisfactory reduction of the fracture. Unless you reduce it in a satisfactory position, you will not be able to fix it in a satisfactory position. So, traction, counter traction, I cannot emphasize enough and I do it for every case. So, Pramod can give a counter traction and I can give traction and you need to give at least 3 to 5 minutes. 3 minutes usually does the job. This will get your radial length good and then bowler angulation, you just need to do palmar flexion and you can watch my video on Coley's fracture reduction and that will help. Once you are happy with your fracture position that you have gained radial length, you have gained radial inclination, then the first wire that you will pass will be the wire through the radial steroid. So once I am happy, I have checked it on the C arm, the position looks good. So I am going to pass my first wire that will be from radial steroid catching on to the ulnar cortex of uh, the proximal uh, radius. Now the first thing what I do is I take the wire in hand and I try to locate the tip of the radial steroid. So you have to make sure of two things. First that this direction is good in an AP and in lateral it is in the center of the radius. So this usually when you are learning new thing, you know, you are starting up the career, you find it quite confusing and you are right in one direction, AP is fine, the lateral goes off and lateral is fine, AP goes off. Now the key is that once you are happy, say for example, this is the right angle in your AP. So now this angle cannot change, this angle cannot change, so you fix this. So this cannot change, you can go up. You can go down, but this cannot change, so that this angle becomes fixed. Once you have fixed one angle, then in lateral, all you need to do is to either do this or do that. And that is about it. So if you can just re-emphasize it, decide the angle, fix it, then take a lateral. If it is perfect, fire it. Otherwise, you just need to be angle either slightly dorsal or slightly bowler. So this is the basic principle of passing the K-wire. So let me demonstrate you how I do it. So now Nitesh has, I am holding the reduction. Nitesh has just used a K-wire and tried to locate the distal radius. So now we will show you the CRM images. 
So if you look at the image now, our position of the wire is quite perfect. The trajectory of the wire looks slightly vertical. So we are just going to make it touch horizontal. And once we are happy, we will move on to how it looks on lateral. So in AP, you can see that the wire was slightly vertical. So we changed the angle slightly um, horizontal. And now this trajectory looks pretty good to me. Then we switched on to the lateral. Fortunately, on this occasion, we are right on the center. But you may not be lucky all the time. So if this is going dorsal, then if this is your wrist, if this is going dorsal, so you change the entry slightly towards the volar side. Similarly, if this is volar, bring it slightly dorsal. And I will explain you on my hand. So say for example, this is my trajectory and I have fixed on this trajectory and I am not going to change it. But in lateral, if this was volar, say for example, this is volar. So with same trajectory, I am going to go slightly dorsal and then check again and then check again till I am fine in both AP as well as lateral. Similarly, if I was a bit dorsal, my entry on AP was good, but then I am dorsal. So I am just going to make it move slightly volar till I am happy that it is in the center. So an ideal wire will go from radial steloid right or bang in the center of the radius. And now the position of the wrist while firing the wire. I think a lot of you struggle because you are fine in one direction and then other direction you are not, it becomes wrong. So you have to correct the radial length. So you need some radial inclination. So like this, but to correct the volar deformity or volar uh, tilt, you need some palmar flexion as well. So this is, so if I am having anybody's hand, if I am having hand of uh, say Mukesh, so I am going to have radial deviation so that the radial length is good and then palmar flexion as well. So this is my position of holding the wrist while the assistant passes the wire or I will, uh, he will hold the wrist and I will pass the fire. So once you start passing the wire, if you are within the bone, you will find and catch the other cortex. So this is, I think, catching the second cortex. You can feel the resistance and then you will feel the giving way. Just coming down and that's it. If your direction is good, you will get this giving way. If you are too volar or too dorsal, you will not get this. So now we have passed the wire and I can vouch for anything that we just took one attempt. If you follow the principle, this is what it is looking on our first attempt. So radial steloid going here, it could be slightly more horizontal, that would be preferable, but it's doing its job. And this is what I was talking about. When you pass the cortex here, you will get the giving way. And if you look at the lateral, how beautiful it is. The volar angulation is almost anatomical. This wire is right in the center. And this is what your ideal first wire is. So if you follow the principle, it's very simple. Fix one and then you change only the other thing. I teach the same thing in arthroscopy and same is for passing the wire. Fix one angle and then change only the other thing. And I can guarantee you that you will take less attempts in passing the wire. Now I've been practicing in India for almost uh, six years and it will be six years in a week's time. And I have seen wires of different shapes in different configuration. And I have seen wire going from there to there. I have seen going, wire going from volar to dorsal. I have seen three wires. I have seen wires going from there. You know, I have seen multiple configuration. And a lot of times I don't agree with whatever I see. So what I do is the first wire will be always like this. Then depending upon what your philosophy is, if you follow the philosophy of Kapanji, then you go intrafocal at the fracture site and then do it. I have tried it. It doesn't make a huge difference, provided you do the job properly. Even an extra focal technique or a normal technique is also very good. So the second wire again will be, I will take an AP ensuring that my wire is in the center of the radius, just at the lip of the articular surface. So let me show you. So this is my wire position and I will show you how it looks on a CM. 
So if you look at the C arm, uh, my Y position is pretty central and that is what I want to aim. I want to be in the center or the main meat of the radius. So I am happy with my position. So I am just going to angle it so as to catch the lip and I will confirm that on a lateral. So again following the same principle of uh, passing a wire in a three dimensional space, you make one angle constant. So I am happy with my position that in AP as well as lateral, my position of the wire is pretty good. However, if you see the lateral, the wire is going quite vertical. So I just need to decrease that angle so that it is going past the fracture site. But you do not want to be decreasing the angle too much because what happens is usually the wire will keep sliding inside the cortex and it will not go past the other side. Saying that, you have to be very, very mindful that you just pass the wire just outside the bone because median nerve is waiting for you on the other side. So if you see, I am keeping the hand palmer flexed and again, like your AP wire, this will also inquire a resistance. So this is the second cortex. It's just about to go, just about to go. That's it. So we stop there. You don't want to be tickling the median nerve on the other side. Now again, we took only one attempt and if you see, the lateral is perfect. The wire has just come out. AP, we could be slightly more uh, this way, but it is doing the job. The fracture is beautifully fixed. The reduction is pretty close to anatomical and we have just taken two attempts and in two attempts, we have got a perfect AP as well as lateral wire. So if you follow this principle, I am sure you will also be able to do this with great ease. So we have cut the wire and we have taken some uh, final images which uh, Prashant will show. And this is how you uh, do uh, a K-wire of this radius. So this is our final position and position is uh, pretty good. And I am happy with what we have done. We are going to put her in a back slab for roughly uh, uh, two weeks and after that we will uh, immobilize the hand for around four to six weeks in total. After that we will get her going. But all the patients with, with, uh, with uh, distal radius fracture, I do put them on vitamin C for around three months. So this is one thing if you follow me, start prescribing vitamin C, it decreases the incidence of CRPS. So this is how you do our K wire of a pistol radius or a Coley's fracture. So you know, this was a demonstration on how to do a K wiring of Coley's or distal radius fracture. It is pretty straightforward if you get the principles right. I can understand why people struggle in early parts of the career or even in later parts if you don't focus on the principles. If you follow the principles shown in this video, I am sure you will pass wires with minimum difficulty and with great results. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.